coming up tonight. What next for Barnet as they prepare for a future away from Underhill? It's just not a viable or feasible option for us to stay here. Is there light at the end of the tunnel for Wickham in their battle to avoid the drop? Sometimes you don't know what you're going to get and um, you know that's a challenge at the moment for the players. We need to be more consistent. We've got all the goals from all our boys over the weekend and we force a Millwall fan to remember a season to forget. Derby, Leicester, Port Vale, couldn't beat any of them. And then the manager walks out. Evening all, joining me and Mr Mark Bright in the studio today, we have a man who can cover two clubs for us and two divisions, Jason Ewell of League One Charlton, currently on loan with Wimbledon in League Two. Back Jason, where it all began. So briefly, can you compare the, the new Wimbledon with the old Wimbledon for us? No, they're very different in, in ways, just the tradition is there the same, they want to be successful and it's, it's been a, a very good, good few years and happy times at Wimbledon. Plenty more from these two throughout the show for you. Um, we're going to start though with Barnet. Barry Fry, Alan Mullery, Ray Clements and Peter Shreves are some of the famous names who've barked orders from the Underhill dugout. But the old ground could soon fall silent as the club plan to move away from their much loved home. Chris Slake has more. If we had to move then obviously I would still go with the club but I would hope to think that it wouldn't be too far away. Yes, it's great, very traditional. Underhill's fantastic, fantastic memories to me here but we have to move forward. I'd like to think they could find a way to stay here but I think there's got to be a lot of coming together from the chairman and Barnet Council. There's no place like home and there's no other home that's a place quite like Underhill. Barnet have been here for more than a hundred years but possibly not for many years more. A row with the local council has led Barnet to announce next season will be their last at Underhill. The famous sloping pitch has witnessed plenty of drama, none more so than last year's great escape. We scored early in the second half and you could hear the crowd that um, the other game that was going on that they were losing and because we were so close we were getting the results through, you know, it was really, really strange. It felt like we'd won the league, which is in a bad in a way because we just stayed up, but we had to celebrate it because we were gone, we were buried with 10 games to go, so it was, it was an achievement in some sense. That achievement may well be one of the last for Barnet fans to savour at their long time home. With a move on the cards, the question now is where to? This is the Hive, Barnet's state of the art training ground in Edgware, opened by none other than Fabio Capello in 2009 and alongside these impressive facilities the initial works of what was once going to be the home of non-league Willstone. Is it now where Barnet's long-term future lies? We either use the hive as a temporary stopgap and then move on to an area where we can build a permanent stadium or perhaps we could even use the hive to build on and use that as our permanent stadium. What we really want to do is find somewhere where the local council will accept us. We hope that our fans realise the bigger picture and that when we move from Underhill that they come with us and still support us because we still will be Barnet Football Club. Do you think it would be a shame if, if you had to leave? Yeah, it would be a big shame, yeah. Definitely, I mean, since I've been at the club it's been, we've had some really good times there and it would be a really shame to, to move out of the area because it might affect the supporters as well, you know. For many, Underhill will always be where Barnet's heart is, but their future home looks set to lie outside of EN5. So, the future of Barnet, they're certainly going to move away from Underhill next season. You can see, I suppose, the argument from both sides, can't you, Brighty? Because there's a, the, the training facility there could house them, but then they're seven miles away from the, the place they call home. In an ideal situation, <coughs> the hive would be in the borough and they could stay in the borough. But listen, loads of teams have had to move from out of their stadiums. And I'd have to say that, you know, Tony Cleanthus, the, the chairman, I've, you know, I know him. And, you know, there's no glory in being the chairman at a, at a club like Barnet for 20 years. You know, it is hard. And what he's trying to do is make sure, ensure that the club's survival. And by moving, if, I think the hive is, is really where it's at. You've, you've got, they've got to move there because it's seven miles 
Jason can tell you probably more than me, the fans want the association with their club in their borough. That's not going to happen. So you have to look at alternatives. Now, I know the fans are probably saying, oh, you don't support the club and you don't. But you have to, the club has to survive. That stadium, if they complete it, it'll be probably ideal for them because they're working on crowds of about four, four three, four thousand. Um, so unless they get promotion to the championship, they would need a big round. If that was the case, then obviously it could extend. Now, facility is always a, a good thing about a new stadium, Jason, but as a player, when you play in a new stadium, some people do complain about a lack of atmosphere, a lack of feel, particularly when you've been somewhere like Underhill for so long. Yeah, if you look at you said the size of the stadiums, I think if you can get to the, to the, the levels that you want, if you're saying if you're going to build, for example, maybe a six, seven thousand for, for Barnet and they're going to get three or four, it could still bring a good atmosphere, but it's one in the long term best for the club and if that is the case of having to move from Underhill I think the players will be happy to to be fully behind that. Okay let's have a look at uh, Barnett's goals from the weekend because they went mm. to, to Port Vale desperate for a win and, and thankfully they got one even though they went behind early to Mark Richards goal. Yes I mean Port Vale just gone into administration and we're just outside the playoffs and um, obviously it's a, it's a blow going 1-0 behind. Now this is Ben May who uh, on loan from Stevenage, he met his teammates on the bus and then, and then scored. <laughs> Amazing. It just happens like that. I think if there's, any, if there's any position that can happen, that's a striker just joining the team. Adam Yudon comes on. and This is his very first touch within two yes. seconds of coming on. Well, I mean, that is an unbelievable substitution, you know, from, from Laurie Sanchez. And you think that, you know, he scored seven goals on loan at Braintree this season. And he comes on there and he scores. His, that's, his, that's his first goal in the league. So well done him and good win. Congratulations to Andy Yudon, not Adam Yudon, by the way. Thank Let's you. talk about... Um, 